Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, universal indistinguishability of fiscation and witness encryption. And this is in joint work with uh, Ayush, Moni, Amit, and Elon. So in the last few years, we have seen uh, numerous interesting results, such as uh, the feasibility of function encryption, two-round MPC, uh, self-binary maps, and uh, impossibility results, and so on. And the tool that enabled all these results is uh, the notion of indistinguishability of fiscation. So what is indistinguishability of fiscation? Uh, it's just a circuit compiler that takes us input a circuit and spits out another circuit such that uh, it satisfies two properties. Uh, the first property is the correctness. Uh, we require that the compiled circuit agrees with the original circuit on all inputs. And the second property is the security property. Uh, suppose we start with two circuits that are functionally equivalent. Uh, let's say you apply I.O. on both these circuits. We require that the compiled circuits are computationally indistinguishable. So this is the security guarantee. So now that we have seen that uh, I.O. is a powerful notion and it implies uh, useful results, the next natural question is to ask is, how do we construct this primitive? Okay. And uh, the very first construction of I.O. was uh, given by Gurg, Gentry, Halevi, Raikovas, and Waters in uh, 2013. And they built this primitive uh, using the notion of multilinear maps. Since then, there have been numerous constructions. And uh, all these constructions have been built using multilinear maps. Okay. I can broadly classify all these constructions into two categories. Uh, in the first category, we have uh, IO constructions whose security has been proven in uh, ideal multilinear map model. So in this model, uh, we consider adversaries who can access the encodings in a black box manner. And uh, on, the, on the other hand, we have some constructions which are based on concrete assumptions on M-maps. Okay. Um, so now that we have seen that we can build I.O. from multilinear maps, the next question to ask is, can we instantiate multilinear maps? And the good news is that uh, there are several candidates of multilinear maps known. Uh, starting from the work of uh, Gurg, Gentry, and Halevi. But the bad news is, is that uh, several concrete assumptions on uh, M-maps are broken. In fact, there are also attacks on uh, uh, I.O. candidates from M-maps as well. Okay. So uh, at this point, given the attacks on multilinear maps, it's natural to ask if all the candidates of I.O. are broken. Uh, and the answer turns out to be no. I should also confess that I'm not attending the cryptanalysis talks. Um, so, um, so I will show the status of all the I.O. candidates uh, in this table. Uh, so the rows indicate all the I.O. candidates. And the columns indicate the functions for which these candidates are defined. And uh, we are going to mark an entry in this table to be using, using cross mark if uh, this particular candidate for this functionality is broken. And we mark it, with, mark it with dot if we don't know of any attack so far. Okay. And uh, I have, I'm not describing what are these class of functions. Uh, these are the class of functions such that it suffices to build I.O. For, the, for them uh, in order to get I.O. for arbitrary class of functions. Okay. Uh, this is obtained via what we call bootstrapping theorems. Okay. And the table extends to the next page as well. So as you can see, there are a lot of dot marks here. Okay. So now that we have seen that we have so many candidates that we know, we don't know whether they are broken or not, uh, we want to find a candidate that is uh, the most secure among all of them. Okay. Uh, perhaps a more ambitious goal is if you give me a set of I.O. candidates, uh, I need to find an I.O. candidate that is secure as long as there exists an I.O. candidate in your set that is secure. Okay, And uh, this is what we will call as I.O. combiner. So I.O. combiner essentially uh, gives a mechanism of combining different candidates into a single candidate that is secure as long as any of the candidates you have combined is secure. Okay. And in fact, we achieve something stronger uh, what is called as robust IO combiner. Uh, we only require that the secure candidate be correct. So it could be that all the other insecure candidates you have given me are incorrect, 
and even then our combiner would work. Okay. So let me define this uh, notion more precisely. But before that, uh, I want to mention the concurrent work by Fishlin et al. Um, they show how to get robust to a combiner for a constant number of candidates, and they assume that uh, uh, an honest majority of them, the, a majority of them are secure and correct. And it's going to be in the next talk, so uh, I don't want to talk about it in more detail. So let me define what are robust IO combiners in, uh, more formally. So suppose, let's say, you give me um, n candidates, p1 to pn. So these are the descriptions of the candidates. So my IO combiner will have two algorithms. The first algorithm is an obfuscate algorithm uh, that takes as input the description of all the candidates. Uh, the circuit to be obfuscated, and it outputs uh, C star, which is the obfuscated circuit. And then you have the evaluation algorithm that takes as input, again, the description of all the candidates, the obfuscated circuit, uh, the input on which you want to evaluate the obfuscated circuit on, and it outputs Y. Okay? Just as in any I.O. scheme, uh, this needs to satisfy two properties, which are correctness and security. And uh, both these properties will be parameterized by an index i from 1 to n. That is, let's say there exists, uh, so we want to define both these properties as a function of i. Um, so uh, the correctness guarantee just says that the output of the evaluation algorithm is c of x. And uh, this should be true as long as the ith candidate satisfies the correctness property. And the security property says that if you give me two equivalent circuits, then the output of the obfuscate algorithm on C0 is uh, computationally indistinguishable from uh, output of the obfuscate algorithm on C1. And this, again, should hold as long as uh, PI satisfies the security property of the I.O. scheme. Just to summarize, uh, if PI is a correct and secure scheme, then the combined candidate is also correct and secure. So and the, the rest of the candidates could be incorrect and insecure. That doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, so let's see uh, why robust combiners are useful. Uh, it implies what we call universal I.O. So what is universal I.O.? Uh, a scheme is said to be a universal I.O. scheme. If at all I.O. exists, then this particular scheme is a secure I.O. scheme. So in, uh, just to state it in a different way, if you show that I.O. exists, then this particular description of, uh, of the universal I.O. scheme is a secure I.O. scheme. And uh, I'm omitting parameters T and Q from this description, where T denotes the running time of the I.O. scheme that exists, and Q is the security loss. Um, and uh, our work answers a question posed by Goldwasher Kalai, who, uh, who uh, posed the question of constructing universal I.O. Okay. okay, so uh, let me state our main theorem. We show that assuming sub-exponentially secure LWE, there exists a robust I.O. combiner. We also have another result where we show how to get robust I.O. combiner uh, from sub-exponentially secure DDH. And as a corollary, we get uh, universal I.O. under the same assumptions. So we also consider uh, robust combiners for witness encryption. Uh, I'm not going to define what is witness encryption, but the only thing you need to know is that uh, all constructions of witness encryption are uh, currently based on multilinear maps. And so suffer from the same vulnerabilities as that of I.O. Okay. And uh, we can also define robust uh, witness encryption combiners along the same lines as uh, that of robust I.O. combiners. So and in this work, we show how to get robust I.O. combiners from one-way functions. And uh, as a corollary, you can also get universal witness encryption assuming one-way functions. Okay, so let me, uh, the notion of combiners and uh, universal constructions is not a new thing, so let me uh, briefly recall what is known. Um, 
The famous example is uh, that of Levin's universal one-way function. And uh, Asmuth studied uh, combiners for encryption schemes. Uh, there was a beautiful work which studies uh, combiners for crypto some crypto primitives such as uh, oblivious transfer, uh, and it also uh, studies its connection to uh, universal constructions. This is the work of uh, Harnik, Killian, Naur, uh, Reingold, and Rosen. And there were also some uh, notions of robust combiners considered for obfuscation in the work of Herzberg. Okay, so let me uh, uh, show how to build a robust IO combiner. So let's start with a very weak goal uh, where we just have three candidates. Okay, so we have P1, P2, and P3, and we want to build robust IO combiner for these three candidates. Okay? So the most uh, natural approach that comes to your mind is that of uh, re obfuscation. Okay? So you start with uh, the circuit C that you want to obfuscate. Uh, you're going to first obfuscate uh, C using P1, and then you're going to obfuscate this result using P2, and then you're going to obfuscate this result using P3. Okay. Okay. So this is the naive construction. Let's see whether it works or not. Uh, so the question is whether it's secure. So for simplicity, let's just assume that, the, that all the candidates P1, P2, and P3 are correct. Uh, let's take a simple case. Sorry. Let's take a simple case where P2 is secure, but P1 and P3 are not secure. But note that all the three candidates are correct. Okay. And uh, it's an easy exercise to show that uh, the security of P2 implies the security of the combined scheme. And uh, you'll realize that it is crucial that P1 satisfies correctness properties in order to prove this statement. So the next natural question to ask is, what if the candidates, insecure candidates are incorrect, uh, whether this will work or not? At first, you might think that what is the connection between correctness and security? It should still be secure, right? Uh, and the answer turns out to be that the IO combiner is, in fact, insecure. Yeah? And let's see why. Let's see a counterexample. So let's start with two circuits, C0 and C1, which are functionally equivalent. And let's start with the case when P1 is incorrect. Okay. So on the left world, P1 on input C0 could potentially output a garbage circuit, in which case the combined circuit on input X will always output bot. Okay. On the right hand side, uh, P1 on input C1 could output a functionally equivalent circuit. In which case, uh, the combined circuit, the combined scheme behaves correctly. So with this, we have a trivial distinguisher to distinguish the left and the right worlds. And uh, so this doesn't work. Okay. So even though this counterexample doesn't work, but there is still some uh, message that we can uh, take. And the message is that if you have a circuit that needs to be obfuscated, then you have to hide this circuit from all the candidates. Okay. So this sort of leads to a natural idea. Uh, just do secret sharing of the circuit. Right? So you want to obfuscate a circuit C, secret share this circuit, and distribute the secret shares among all the candidates. And once you do that, we somehow, on input X, these candidates jointly compute C of X. So it's not clear what this means and how to implement this step. Um, and uh, in order to uh, implement this step, we are going to use techniques from MPC. Okay. At this point, you might be wondering, what is the connection between MPC and the notion of IO combiners? Right? Uh, to see the connection, uh, we can view all the candidates as corresponding to parties in an MPC protocol. So every party corresponds to a candidate. And uh, similarly, all the honest players in the MPC protocol correspond to the secure and correct candidates. And all the insecure uh, candidates correspond to the malicious adversaries in an MPC protocol. So this is the analogy between MPC and, uh, and, uh, and the setting of uh, IO combiners. So with this, 
uh, let's, uh, let's see how to build IO combiner starting from an uh, MPC protocol. So suppose let's say C is a circuit that needs to be obfuscated. So we are going to start with a three-party uh, three secure computation protocol. Uh, note that we are still building IO combiner for just three candidates. Okay. So we just need a three-party three secure computation protocol. So we have these three parties. You're going to secret share the circuit into three shares, G1, G2, and G3. Um, and then you're going to obfuscate the code of these parties with the shares hardwired inside them using the candidates. So for instance, you're going to hardwire the code of the first party with G1 hardwired into it uh, using P1. Okay. Sorry, you're going to obfuscate uh, the code of the party with G1 hardwired into it using P1. So this is the this is sort of the high level approach. Uh, the question is which MPC to use and how to actually implement this approach. Right? Uh, in order to see which MPC to use, uh, the first thing we observe is that all the I/O candidates are actually stateless. Uh, but if you think of MPC, all the parties are actually stateful parties, stateful uh, algorithms, right? And since the IO candidates are uh, stateless, this actually leads to resetting attacks because the evaluator can potentially query the candidates on multiple inputs, observe different values, gain some information. Uh, so this is something we have to keep in mind while choosing the appropriate MPC protocol. So in order to avoid, uh, avoid resetting attacks, we're just going to use a non-interactive MPC. And uh, in particular, we are going to use techniques from threshold FHE-based MPC to actually uh, obtain IO combiner. Okay. So uh, let me present the uh, construction of LW-based IO combiner. Uh, and again, just to keep things simple, assume all candidates are correct. Uh, and I'm going to present uh, an IO combiner for arbitrary number of candidates. Okay, it's not just three now. Okay, so in order to do this, uh, we are going to use a tool uh, which I'm going to call threshold FHE star. Um, this has a setup algorithm that outputs uh, the public key and n secret keys. Here, n will be the number of parties. Okay. And you have an encryption algorithm that uh, encrypts m to obtain ct. There is a homomorphic evaluation algorithm. Uh, and you have a partial decryption algorithm that lets you decrypt the this ciphertext using SKI to obtain the partial decrypted value CTI. Okay. And then there is a public algorithm that uh, lets you combine all these different ciphertexts to obtain F of M. Okay. And uh, you can actually build uh, threshold FHE star from threshold multi-key FHE, which in turn can be uh, based on learning with resolution. So let me present the construction. So we have uh, P1 to Pn uh, candidates. So in order to obfuscate C, the first thing I'm going to do is to run the setup algorithm of the threshold uh, FHE star scheme. Uh, then I'm going to encrypt the circuit C to obtain the ciphertext. Uh, then I'm going to output the following for all uh, indices in N, one to N. So we're going to construct this circuit HI, which has hardwired into it the ciphertext CT, along with the partial, uh, along with the secret key SKI. So what does this circuit do? It takes as input X, uh, first fully homomorphically evaluates the universal circuit on CT, and then it partially decrypts the resulting ciphertext using SKI. And then you're going to obfuscate this HI circuit using PI. Okay. So note that uh, CT comma SKI is essentially the ith share of C. Okay. okay. So uh, in other words, the output of the obfuscate algorithm is essentially P1 of H1 to Pn of H1. So the question is, how do you uh, evaluate? Uh, so you have this uh, obfuscation, uh, obfuscated circuit. For every i, you're going to feed in x, and uh, you're going to get CTI as the output of the circuit. Then you're going to combine all the partial decrypted uh, value CT1 to CTN to produce C of x. 
So this is how the, the evaluation works. Okay, so now the question is, how do we show that this is secure? So let's say PI star is the secure candidate. Uh, the goal will be to remove uh, the I star -th secret key from PI star. And why do we want that? Suppose, let's say you're able to remove SKI star from PI star. Then you can just use semantic security of uh, CT to argue that C is hidden. And uh, how do you remove SKI star? It's going to be removed one step at a time, uh, and the number of steps will be uh, equal to the number of inputs. If you're familiar with uh, punctured programming techniques, it uh, follows along those lines. Uh, but more specifically, we are going to use a technique called partition programming technique, uh, where in the QH step, you will have uh, SKI star uh, not used for the first Q inputs, but it is used for all the rest of the inputs. Okay, okay so this is the high-level proof intuition. Uh, you can work it out and uh, show that this is secure. So let me move on. So, so far we have assumed that, that the, all the candidates are correct, right? Now the question is, what if they are not correct? And uh, at first you might think that maybe the work of uh, Bitansky, Vaikuntanathan might be directly applicable here. And uh, in particular, let me recall what they show. Uh, they show how to go from half plus one by poly, approximately correct I.O. for all circuits, to perfectly correct I.O. for all circuits. And the thing I want to emphasize here is that uh, uh, they require that the scheme they start with should be half plus one by poly correct, and that too it should hold for all circuits. Okay. So, but the natural question to ask here is that how do you even check if a candidate is half plus uh, one by poly correct, and that too for all circuits? And as you might have guessed, this is not possible to do it in polynomial time. Okay, so uh, we are going to use a different approach to solve this problem. So what are we going to do? We are first going to check if the ith candidate is one minus one by nk correct on the specific circuit gi. Okay, here is the security parameter, and this can be done by just sampling. Uh, many random points, and then checking if uh, the obfuscated circuit agrees with the original circuit on these random points. And if the check fails, just discard this candidate. Uh, and then we are going to observe that if you combine all the candidates that remain, uh, then that combined scheme is one minus one by uh, k correct, and that too it is correct for all circuits. And this you can show by union bound and also exploiting the specific structure of the combined scheme we have. Okay. Once you have the second uh, bullet, now you can just apply BV16 on top of this to show, to get an obfuscation scheme that is correct for all inputs. Okay. Uh, so this is how you're going to, we are going to deal with correctness issue. So let me just conclude. So we showed how to construct IO combiner from sub-exponentially secure LWE. What I did not talk about is to uh, construct IO combiner from DDH and also combiners for uh, witness encryption. I uh, encourage you to read the paper. And uh, it, this, uh, the, the result of uh, robust IO combiner implies uh, universal IO from sub-exponentially secure LWE. Um, the natural open question here is that can you actually construct uh, robust IO combiner from one-way functions? and also to construct combiners for other primitives from which are built from M maps. Okay, so, thank you.